Okay, hello and welcome everyone to NEMO's webinar about museums and sustainable development goals. NEMO, the network of European museum organizations, connects national museum associations as well as individual museums and interest groups from over 40 countries. NEMO represents European museums towards policymakers on both national and EU level. Moreover, NEMO provides a platform to share knowledge and train museum professionals in Europe through our training courses, learning exchanges and webinars. Please remember to join our European Museum Conference in Tartu, Estonia, taking place in a few weeks from the 7th to 10th November. At NEMO's conference titled Museums 2030, sharing recipes for a better future, over 200 museum professionals from all over Europe will meet and discuss about the UN Sustainable Development Goals and how they can be applied to museums. In preparation for this conference, we are happy to get an introduction and good overview of this important topic in today's webinar. It will be facilitated by Jasper Fisser. Jasper's professional experience and commitments are quite extensive, so I leave the introduction to him once he starts the session. Please feel free to ask questions with the chat function for the Q&A round at the end of the webinar. I now give over the word to Jasper and wish you all an inspiring session. Thank you, Mira, and uh, hello, everybody. I hope you can you can hear me uh, well. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. From the corner of my eye, I see there's uh, over 70 of you attending this webinar, which is quite exciting. Um, I have to warn you, there are some little bits of participation throughout the webinar. So if you're dozing off or uh, accidentally also secretly browsing on Facebook, uh, uh, keep an eye ear open for when I ask a question so that you can respond and, and, and we're all uh, here. Um, as Mira mentioned, I've done quite a few things in my life, but for the sake of this, this webinar, I think it's important to know that uh, although I'm a museum person right now, although I work in the world of culture and, and heritage, uh, my background is actually in sustainable development. I started my career as a community organizer and as an educational designer around what were then called the Millennium Development Goals. And if you have also worked in the Millennium Development Goals, maybe uh, make some buzz in the chat, because uh, if you've done so, you know that uh, they were quite a big achievement at the time. And I'll, I'll touch upon them a little later on when I introduce their follow-up, which are the Sustainable Development Goals. Currently in my life with my organization, Fishtom, what we do is we help organizations, museums, and other social and cultural organizations to tell stories and build movements that uh, create or contribute to a sustainable future. And I'll talk some about, about some of these projects later on in the workshop uh, as well. The question I want to uh, address with you today, I want to focus on is, is, is the question, how can museums contribute to a more sustainable, safe, and equitable world. This connection, sometimes these things uh, happen. Um, what I'm try, I'll try and do today together with you is, is answer the question, how can museums contribute to a more sustainable, safe and equitable um, world? And as I mentioned beforehand, the framework we're going to use is the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, the Sustainable Development Goals are uh, an agenda um, adopted by the world's governments in 2015 for the year 2030. So you also see it being approached as Agenda 2030. And there are a set of 17 goals and over 160 uh, targets that the governments around the world have set for each other. You'll see their colorful uh, blocks and logos anywhere in the world right now. And, and you can see them here. And they range from uh, making an end to poverty to ensuring uh, that organizations partner up around the goals with each other. And what is important to recognize is that this is a globally adopted and accepted agenda. So although we may argue a little bit about, you know, which goal has our preference and which ones, which of the wording we don't like, it's not necessarily about whether, you know, we exactly agree on the wording of, for instance, uh, goal eight, which is an especially problematic goal as it has 
economic growth in its title. But what is important here is that all governments around the world have come together and said, this is something that we're going to try and achieve in the year 2030. Now, in my introduction, I mentioned that um, I started working on the Millennium Development Goals, and they were a similar set of goals, although there were eight, which we, um, uh, which the governments of the world subscribed to in the year 2000, and they last until 2015. And some of them were similar to the Sustainable Development Goals, but more limited in focus and more limited in scope. And one of the things that um, uh, was the result of the Millennium Development Goals is that we actually made huge progress on some of these goals. So one of them, for instance, was halving child mortality. And that's the thing we achieved. So by dedicating all the resources of the world to halving child mortality, we actually saved tens of thousands of young lives every single day. And you should see the sustainable development goals in the same way. We may argue about which ones we find more important or less important, but what matters is that the collective energy and efforts of the world come together and focus on these, um, focus on these goals, on these 17 goals. Now, before I dive deep, a bit deeper into the goals, I I'd like to ask you a question in the, in the, in the uh, chat function. And that is the question, if you had to choose one of these girls, uh, just out of the blue, right? Even if you've never heard of them, you can read them a little bit. If you had to choose one, which one would you dedicate the next decade of your life to? Aida says quality education, that's goal number four. Uh, Florian goes for climate action. You may know that today's Extinction Rebellion, there's a lot of climate action going on. Quality education, quality education. Molozzi says uh, goal three, good health and well-being. Sustainable cities, number 11, the only one that on 11.4 mentions cultural heritage. And now it's going too fast for me to mention. Four, one, four, 11, 11, climate action, climate change, four. It seems for quality education, uh, climate action, uh, they come back a lot. Obviously, there are, there are um, topics that are very close to, to the museums as being educational institutions, um, but also climate action as, as maybe one of the major challenges that's getting a lot of traction also because of the work of Greta Thunberg, um, who we'll see later on as well. 10, that's a, that's a, a different one, uh, reduce inequalities. Um, there are some goals five and 10, especially 12 to some extent, that are focused on making a more fair and equitable uh, uh, world. Good. Now, you've taken the first step in starting to act on the sustainable development goals because the first step is actually committing and we'll look at that later on. But actually, the way we're approaching this right now is not entirely right. A lot of the conversation about the sustainable development goals focuses on this first layer of objectives. Whereas if you take a deep dive into the sustainable development goals, you'll find that behind every uh, major goal, there's a set of targets, typically around five, but some goals, it's just goal 17, have a long list of targets. And it's actually on these targets where the action happens. So uh, on the screen, although it's a bit small print, you can find all of this on, online. Um, you can see some of the targets that are uh, behind um, goal one, no poverty. And they say things like by 2030, eradicate extreme poverty for people everywhere, currently measured as people living on less than one dollar and 25 cents a day. And you'll see that while the sustainable development goal number one simply says no poverty, if you're going to act as a museum or as an independent or as a professional, these targets may be much more useful for you to take action on because they're much more specific, they're much more measurable, and they're much more relevant to your situation. So if you go and engage professionally with the sustainable development goals, take some time to go through the 169 uh, tar targets that are underlying these 17 goals. Understand exactly where in your community you can make uh, uh, some impact. Now the slides will be shared later on and, and, and the next 
um, this slide is, is just, I, I just show it here to show that when you download a PDF after the, the, the webinar, I've included resources for you to actually understand much more about the goals if you wanna uh, read at your leisure. Um, all of these are links and you can go to these links to actually see and interact with, with some of these resources on your own leisure. For now, what is important is to understand that at the same time the sustainable development goals were adopted um, the governments in the world indicated that the only way to actually make them uh, happen to make them succeed is not if it's just a governmental thing but if we manage to translate these global goals into local action so although this is a global agenda of goals it's local actions that matter. And what you've seen in years since 2015, and especially in the last two years, is that this local action, global goals, um, ID, philosophy, is really uh, starting to pick up speed. And I think this is where museums and other cultural heritage organizations make most of their difference. Many of these topics, for instance, climate action, they may be daunting or impossible to achieve individually. But if you were on a local level, and if you make change on a local level, and we all do that on a local level, we can actually achieve these goals. So don't feel that you need to you know, fix quality education for everyone around the globe. The sustainable development agenda is set up in such a way that we can all come together in our own communities, in our own regions, and address the topics right uh, there. Now, I feel there are three types of actions that museums can take when it comes to this global agenda. So there are three types of local actions that museums can take, three approaches, so to speak. There's a series of goals and targets where museums can lead the way. And we'll uh, look a little bit more at that later on. But these are the topics where we as a community, as a community of, of heritage professionals, cultural professionals, need to take the lead and help others achieve their goals. There's another set, a bigger set of, of actions where museums can actually support others in achieving the sustainable development goals. Remember, this is not about you know, one person fixing everything. This is about all of us collaborating to help uh, achieve these goals. And there's a third set of targets where we as museums don't have to take the lead or don't have to support others but where internal changes in our own operations, in our own working way of working and way of thinking can actually help us achieve these goals globally. This is, these are the type of, of goals and targets where we need to change internally to actually achieve them. Now, and again, um, this is something, there's a link, you can look at this later on when you download the PDFs. Uh, a while, a, a year ago or so, I worked with some people on identifying, you know, on an average where can museums lead the way? Where can they support others? And where can they change internally? Now, this overview, which you see here, which you can access through the link that is down there, which you can download from the, from the PDF, it's not a comprehensive. There are many specific types of museums that can take action on other goals or, or support other targets. But generally speaking, if you want to know where to start, this is a good starting point. And I'll show you a little bit later what it works. But one of the things, for instance, you'll see is that in this overview on goal 14 and 15, I didn't fill in any of the any of the uh, targets. Whereas if you talk about life below water and life on land, as a natural history museum, for instance, these are maybe your primary, uh, the primary goals you can contribute to. So this is not a, a comprehensive or conclusive list, but it's a good starting point for you to begin. And just to give you three examples, of what action can look like. I, I want to talk through three museums uh, that on each of these three different approaches have taken action. So the first one, one of my favorite museums in the world, is the Street Art Museum in Amsterdam. And to me, it feels the Street Art Museum of Amsterdam leads the way in achieving Sustainable Development Goal 8, which has to do with uh, employment and, and good jobs and 11, which has to do with sustainable cities and, and communities. And the way they do this is, is there a museum in one of Amsterdam's suburbs? And one of the simple ways they lead the way is, for instance, by employing a different kind of 
person, not employing the traditional heritage professional, but working with migrants and refugees and providing them an opportunity to have a good job and to work in the in the uh, in a museum and thereby adding a little bit to that that important goal eight which is about fair jobs for everybody at the same time they take a very active role in the neighborhood they're part of and they collaborate with neighbors and citizens and they participate in creating these artworks that 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 they create and they do teaching and 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 other opportunities around it with the neighborhood and through that, they also contribute to goal 11, which is sustainable cities and growth. And they actually, in this neighborhood, which is a suburban neighborhood with not a lot of services, the museum is a leading partner in achieving these goals. They don't do that on their own, but they actually take the lead in achieving these goals because in their neighborhood, there's not a lot of other organizations stepping up to achieve these uh, objectives. A different kind of approach is, is the Billings Farm and Museum in Vermont, in rural Vermont, in the United States of America, where instead of just leading the way, they support other people and especially their community on some of these goals, including goal two, which has to do with hunger and uh, some of the other goals. And what they do is apart from a museum, a living museum about the rural heritage of Vermont, it's also a, a, a living market. It's a place where people come and buy food or they learn about farming practices. And it's also a place where they show that entrepreneurship is not something that only big businesses do, but where heritage-based entrepreneurship actually has a, has a root. So they bring in traditional practitioners, they bring in um, intangible cultural heritage, and they work with that and they show how people uh, coming together can contribute a little bit to the economy of a place in a sustainable way, which is goal 12. Now they don't lead the way per se, but they provide a platform for others who are leading to show their work, which is a very important thing museums can do. And as a third example, and then an example of how a museum can change internally, this is a project we've done ourselves in Amsterdam, which is a center for sustainable fashion called Fashion for Good. And although their mission, mission is also about sustainable fashion, one of the things that when they build the exhibition and when they build the organization, they really try to do was stick to these sustainable guidelines themselves as much as possible. So use responsible light solutions, use responsible paint, uh, provide uh, recycled materials as much as possible so that it's not just the message and the story of the museum that is sustainable, but the museum itself, which tries to be more sustainable, which tries to be more uh, good for the world instead of a forest of bad. These are three examples of, of you know, three different kinds of actions museums can take. And now there's a, ch I'm gonna give you a choice. And this is a bit of a tricky choice, but getting started with the SDGs, an hour is, uh, not enough time, especially when I also mess up a little bit with the internet connection for which I apologize sincerely. So I'm going to give you all a choice. I'll open uh, a, a survey in, in about a second. The choice is going to be, what would you like to focus on in this webinar? So would you like to start with exploring ways and approaches and strategies for museums to lead the way in achieving these sustainable development goals? Would you like to choose how museums can support others in uh, uh, obtaining the goals? Or would you like to talk more deeply, more profoundly about how museums can change internally? Now, if it's correct, you can now see um, a survey, which the good people of Nemo were also very excited about uh, practicing for once. And I'd like to add, ask you to see, you know, which, what would you like to focus on today? There's heavy voting going on. And it's, it's a tight race between leading the way and changing internally. If we end up with a draw, I have to talk twice as fast. Of course, I'm going to share the share the uh, slides with all of you so you can you can browse through the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the all of the slides i prepared for all three of them so um it doesn't really matter but it can see 
I can't see. I'm going to give, you know, I'm going to start count down from 10 and that zero will make the decision. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it seems, oh, a last minute vote for museums lead the way. But it seems that we, we're going to start to focus on how can museums change internally. Now, apart from having seen the vote, it's also interesting to see from this small group of people that the things you're interested in is both leading the way and changing internally. And obviously, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and address both of them in, in the remainder, in the remaining 32 minutes of our, our webinar. So let's just uh, get started as quickly as possible with museums change internally, and then when there's some time left, also look at how museums can uh, lead the way. There we go, back to the presentation. Thank you for voting. So, museums change internally. There we go. Changing, museums changing internally to support the sustainable development goals, I think is a set of three decisions. It's a strategic decision from senior management or the board or the board of directors to actually become a 100% future-proof organization. It's a tactical choice to collaborate with other organizations uh, to um, uh, achieve these goals. And especially, it's an operational attitude of everyone in the organization to whenever there is an opportunity, make the decision that is more sustainable. And on a more sort of like philosophical le uh, 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 level, what I think it requires is that we move from a proprietary approach to resources, we own everything we need, to a shared approach to resources where we look at the resources in our community and we only make use of those that we need, but we also provide those that we own to others to succeed. And I want to start this, this changing internally by a story about this building. Um, as you can see, this is a government building and it's the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Netherlands. And about 15 years ago, when I was much younger than I am right now, um, I was part of a young group of people. We were about 25 to 30 people. And we would do, uh, uh, we, we'd call them robberies of uh, organizations that invited us it says the ministry of foreign affairs but also municipalities and did bring on bring in us as a group of young people and our mandate for, for the day was to come up with all possible ways in which the organization could become more sustainable we were given an all access pass to every part of the building you know keys to every door we could question everybody and at the end of the day, we would come up with a list of recommendations for the organization to become more sustainable. And what happened, obviously, was that we started as young people running around and being bold and fighting and talking with, with everybody in the room. And during lunch, we would look if everybody turned the lights off and if they turned the screens off. And we'd you know, go to the printer and we'd see how many papers were printed that were uh, irrelevant or, 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 uh, or not, not, not valuable. And we'd bring that together, we'd create a list of recommendations, we'd hand them over to, in the, in the case of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to the, the, the DG of the, of, the, of the ministry. And they would commit to changing as much as possible within a month. And the surprising thing here, and the message I want to share with you, is that actually when we came back after a month or two months, a lot of impact would have been made. There's a lot you can do in your internal organization to be more sustainable with very little trouble. And in recent years, we've seen museums uh, do that across the board. So on the left, there's a screen from the Amsterdam Museum, which made headlines around the world recently by dropping the term golden age from its communications, which ties into some sustainable development goals about talking about an inclusive story about history. And on the right, you can see the Walker Art Center, uh, which is one of the many, many museums around the world where uh, relate to goal five, gender equality, they've dropped the gender, the binary gender approach to restrooms and instead created an all gender restroom. Now these are changes 
that are super small and super tiny and you can achieve very rapidly, but can have a major impact on how audiences perceive you and how people uh, interact with you. And also how you're seen as being uh, a leading uh, organization, leading on, on uh, the sustainable development agenda. So the approach, the approach here, the thing you, you I think need to do is invite your audience to be your auditor. Open up a day, open a day uh, or, or maybe a weekend or a special occasion where you invite all these people that are already active in these goals. Ask them to come in and recommend all the changes that you can make to your organization so that you actually become more sustainable. And I actually think if you do this and you do this based on you know all the lessons that we've learned about participation in recent years. So uh, these are just two two examples. And if you think of all the experience we had in participatory practice, you can make your journey to changing internally towards a more SDG proof organization, a participatory exercise that involves and engages your audience. Uh, so invite them in much like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs invited me as a youngster and ask them to focus on anything that they think your organization can improve. And just to give you some, some examples of what happens when you do this, and we've been going through organizations doing this, is there's tons of very small things that you can do, you can start doing tomorrow that actually make your organization more SDG proof. For instance, prioritize local plant-based food. Make the default option in your restaurant a vegetarian option. And don't even mention that it's a vegetarian option. Just stop serving uh, meat. Now, I know in some cultures, this may be more difficult than in other cultures, but generally speaking, uh, there are plenty of good plant-based options available. Uh, most of our museums are smoke-free already, thank God, but also offer, and this has to do with, with Gold 3.5, su sufficient alcohol-free options. Also during your own events, during your internal events, uh, simply by doing something so small, you already start becoming more SDG proof. And with visitors use public transport and all gender discrimination, including in pay. So this may be a more uh, strategic decision to do, but it's something you need to focus on. And the next person you hire, make sure that they, you know, their, their salary is the same, whether they're a man or a woman or uh, anything else. Free drinking water, uh, environmentally uh, friendly cleaning materials, electricity from renewable sources. All of these little changes can have a huge impact, not just directly on, on the sustainability of your organization, but also in the mindset of people. The moment you start using uh, environmentally free, uh, environment friendly cleaning materials, it changes a little bit of the, of the, 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 the mentality. There's a question, what are the numbers on the right hand side? Sorry, I should have uh, explained that. This is the sustainable development goal. So it's two and then the point four, the four is the target. So it's the, um, the goal and the target and, and each of them addresses a specific uh, uh, target. There are long lists of these that you can go through and the best way to actually approach this is to invite your audience to, to uh, uh, tell them for you. All of these are choices you can make today and in bed tomorrow. And just to show what this can mean, this is an, an image I took from, from the internet. You can find the source at the bottom. Uh, um, these little things, if you're a public institution like a museum, can mean a lot. So simply choosing related to gender equality to say welcome esteemed guests instead of welcome ladies and gentlemen has a signal to your community and to the people that visit you that you're looking forward to a future where actually there is gender equality and everybody is included. And it's these small things that have a huge, huge, huge impact, probably much more than just talking about it. So if you see a little bit of this and then we'll move on. Um, and, and this is a good because it's it's a pressure cooker and it's and it's public. Uh, if you see this list or if you if you think about this, is there one thing that you can commit to tomorrow to trying to achieve internally in your museum after the webinar? It helps greatly if you make it explicit. So share this in in the comments and see if if there's one thing, one small thing that you can do to change internally 
to uh, commit to the goals. I see a lot of people are writing. I'm very curious to see what they're uh, what they're uh, going to say. Lower the consumption of electricity. This is a great thing that you can ask people to help you with, right? There's a lot of electricity being lost. And don't think that if you use renewable energy, you can waste energy because all the renewable energy that's not being used is going to, uh, is replacing unrenewable sources. So even if you are on 100% renewable energy, try and limit your energy use as much as possible. Recycling bins, screens and office lights off at lunchtime, uh, free water, free drinking water. It's a very simple thing and not in plastic bottles. Just have a tap that people can drink from directly or you, you, uh, use sustainable cups. Free drinking water is a great, it's a great solution. If you're interested in free drinking water, there's a couple of solutions on the market, like the pipe that uh, you can reach out to and they collaborate. And if you put in one of their tap points, they'll install one in Sub-Saharan Africa or elsewhere. So immediately you become also part of the partnership for the goals. Now, of course, it's not just one thing that you need to do. This is a uh, graffiti that's on the wall of my uh, neighborhood. And I find it for, very inspiring because it every day encourages me to do more shit. Uh, start with one thing, but move on to the next and the next and the next. There's 11 years left until 2030. Um, they call the next decade the decade of delivery and the sustainable development goals. If you change one thing every month, you can still change over 100 things before 2030. And that's probably all you need to do to make your museum more uh, sustainable in the long term. And to, you know, to, to give you the framework that this is, of course, not just about you using gender inclusive language or you being a meeting point for all citizens but it's about create, changing an environment in which people come and appreciate. And by changing that environment, also changing the people, changing yourself, changing you know, your colleagues, changing your audience as well. If they see recycling in the museum, they'll be more likely to recycle at home. If they, see, if they eat a nice cheese sandwich in your cafeteria, it may just be the tipping point that uh, makes them choose for a less meat intensive diet at home. It's the small things you do internally as a museum that can have a great impact. And that leads me to the second topic that you actually choose to uh, address, which is museums leading the way. I'm scrolling back. So, of course, apart from the small things, many of you wanted to see how can museums actually not just change internally, which is something we all should do, but how can museums lead the way in a transition towards achieving the sustainable uh, development goals. And I think leading the way, unlike uh, changing internally, is mostly a strategic decision because it has to do with how you relate, how your organization relates to society. And now there's been a lot of talk about museums not being neutral, right? Museums are not neutral. And I think that's, it's fair. Obviously museums are not neutral. Uh, but what's missing from that debate sometimes is if they're not neutral, what are they? And I would like to offer that instead of neutral, a museum is a conscious institution, conscious of the society it is aware of and the challenges that surround it. And conse consequently, also taking responsibility, active responsibility for that society it is part of and for the people that live in that um, society. Now, if you look at that agenda, these 17 goals, they may seem daunting. There may be, you know, there are 17 of them. It's a huge responsibility to actually uh, address all of them. My recommendation would be, much like, you know, changing internally, not to try and address all 17 of them in your community. But actually, as a museum, as a respected institution, choose one or maybe two where you're going to lead the way. Choose your topic and then commit to it, uh, vocally to others and uh, to yourself. And one of the tools that we typically use to ask people, you know, how, how do you choose that topic, is to look for the topic that affects your story, it, you know, in the most extreme way, and it has considerable impact in your community. Um, 
climate action, which is top of a lot of people's minds, or quality education, which seem to be a very big topic amongst amongst US listeners, um, they may you know be very important to you and things you feel about very much, but are they also the topics that matter most to your museum? Does it affect the story you tell and does it have considerable impact in your uh, uh, community? So when you combine this, what you for instance see, and I know many of you will know Jantli, uh, uh, the, 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 the open air museum in, in Sweden, uh, you will see that their project called New Village is one of these projects that scores perfectly in this, in this quadrant. So, in Sweden, there were a lot of new people, a lot of new migrants looking for homes, which affected the community of the Jantli Museum. But Jantli is also a museum, an open-air museum, that tells the story of how people live in a certain, uh, uh, in that region and throughout history. So when they, they combined the two, they came to the realization that if they were going to build some houses, a new village, for migrants and other people, you know, at risk of, of not having a home, and they made it part of the of the uh, 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 museum, they would actually have a project that had considerable impact and affected their story in a positive way. And even though this project wasn't initiated under the flag of the SDGs, this is a really meaningful and impactful project. Whereas, and I see somebody already picking that up in the comments, if you look at the entire other way, um, there's a lot of organizations, fortunately not some museums, but a lot of other organizations that are simply saying we stick to the sustainable development goals. They raise a flag, but they don't do little, they do little else, which has a very limited impact in the community and typically does not at all affect a story. So that's the other end of the spectrum. And you'll find that for every museum, the answer to what has considerable impact in our community and what affects our story is a different uh, uh, sorry, I see somebody mentioning the Malmo Moderna Museum as a good example as well, a socially inclusive museum. I don't know about that one, but please drop me a link over email and I'd be happy to study about it. You'll see that most of the best projects, they sit in the top right corner of this uh, quadrant. So figuring this out. Again, this is something you can do together with your community because they know what matters for their community. They know how it changes. and. There's no image of this, but I just want to tell a, a little anecdote which pops in my mind right now. A while ago, I was working with a natural history museum in, in Canada, and they mentioned uh, that to them, climate change is the big story, right? It's the one story they want to tell, but it doesn't resonate with their audience at all. And after a lot of research, they'll, uh, uh, they figured out that climate change is too big even though it has considerable impact in their community, it's so big that people can't relate to it. And instead of focusing on climate change as a topic, they started looking at how does that affect people's back gardens? How does it affect you know, everyday life? And they figured out that if they approach that same story from the question of why do certain plants that used to grow well in my neighborhoods when I was younger not grow any longer, and why do some plants that were you know, not adhere at all now all of a sudden grow in our, our neighborhood. And then you can see how that story has more impact in the community. And you can tell the same story, but in a much more impactful uh, way. Somebody asks a question. I think, uh, I don't know if it's relevant right now, but I'll, I'll try, I'll, I'll, bu I'll come back to that at the end of the, of the workshop. I think we can pin it. I pin it and then um, we'll go back to that. So once you've decided on your topic, it is committing. And I think everybody knows the girl in this photo and many of you will be uh, enthralled and, and inspired by her. And I think apart from the message that Greta is sharing with the world, I think the one thing that stands out to me and uh, she's not alone, there are many young people, many young girls of all different uh, nations and all over the world doing the same thing, is the commitment they show to their cause. For one, entire full year Greta has been striking for the climate in front of the in front of the Swedish uh, parliament it's not just a one day uh, affair it's not just one lecture it's continuously going back to it and if you follow her and you you on twitter or 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 or, or in the news you'll see that she's actually part of a network of young people that have committed every single waking hour of their lives to some of these these girls and i think there's a lesson in that for museums. It's not enough to say, hey, there's one project we're gonna do. 
you have to actually commit to owning that if you want to lead uh, the way. So how do you commit to impact? Some of these I already mentioned, make it local. You can choose any of the girls, quality education, but what does quality education mean in your community? Make it specific, not just say, we're going to do something with quality education, but say in our community in 2030, no one will be excluded from education. Which leads into the second point is the Millennium Development Goals were about halving child poverty and about reducing things. The Sustainable Development Goals are about eradicating, limiting, stopping forever certain things that are not good to, uh, to us. So commit to real radical change. Collaborate with others. There are many ways in which museums can support others in the goals. And you can see in the PDF after the, the, the webinar which ones these are, but also invite others to collaborate with you. If you're going to lead the way on one or two topics in your community, there will be eight or nine other organizations leading another topic. Just collaborate with each other, help each other achieve that agenda. And the last one, if you commit, tell the world that you're committing to it. There are some links in the PDF I'll share later on where you can actually register your commitment with the United Nations so that the world can follow you and they'll keep you up to date and they'll track you and, and they'll force you to write reports. And that's a way also to show that you're serious about your uh, uh, commitment. This is not a you know, free for all. We have to achieve this and, and, and telling the world is one way to do that. And lastly, if you commit, organize for impact. And I think the one thing here is that is important to know is that this is called the Agenda 2030 with a reason. Um, in 2030, we want to have achieved these 17 goals. The only way we can do that is if everybody, everybody in the world comes together and collaborates on them. But we don't have to do everything tomorrow. There's many things we can start doing tomorrow, but we need to plan for these 11 years that are ahead. What are all the things that we're going to do? And maybe for your organization, that means that the first thing you can do is just do a small event on quality education or gender equality. Maybe something you know that you can still get in your schedule, in your busy exhibition schedule. And then the first opportunity you have to do an exhibition, you're going to do that. And then you're actually going to spin it off into a separate you know, movement that you're supporting in your locality so that by 2030, You've achieved the goal, and actually, there's a new organization that is, you know, working on the on the on the goal that you've selected. You don't have to do everything tomorrow. You can face it out over the next eleven years, which gives you much more time to do it thoroughly, to do it collaboratively, and to do it um, sustainably. Now. In summary, and you, you can download the slides later on, you, we, we skipped the second one because you didn't want to do that, but I, I recommend that you also look at how museum can support others because that's a great role that we can play. We, we're a great trusted partner in our communities to actually support others to achieve the goals. In summary, if museums want to contribute to the sustainable development goals, they can lead the way by committing to one topic and really focusing on it or two topics at most. We can support others, and you'll see in the PDF afterwards, by defining our value and partnering with others. And we can change internally by walking the walk while we talk the talk. So by really doing the things that we need to do, not just chatting about it, but every time we have a lecturer come over to talk about sustainability, also ask them what are the two or three things that we can do tomorrow here in our organization to make ourselves uh, better. This is not easy. But we still have 11 years left to get there. And I'm pretty sure, given the energy that's been coming up in the past uh, uh, 11 years, uh, past months, and with the, uh, the, the NEMO conference coming up, it's a, it's a challenge that we can handle. Now, before we move to the questions, I just wanted to show you, as I mentioned in the PDF, there are a lot of resources available. There's a great book written by Henry McGee, who is also at, in, in uh, at the NEMO conference later this year. There's a lot of, I wrote a couple of blog posts. There's a lot of resources available if you want to do more. You can also always email me and ask how to move, uh, how to uh, move ahead or if, you know, if there are organizations you want to partner with. This is something we need to do together. And I'm 
I'm more than happy to help. And I think many of you are happy to help. Which gives me some time to go to questions. Now, there were some questions that are pinned. I'll have a look at that. Uh, but also, um, if you want to ask a question, feel free to write them in the comments and I'll respond to that. There's one question from the, from the very beginning is somebody asking, uh, apart from the three options I gave, is also how can we measure and how can we track this? And I think that's actually quite interesting uh, question as some museums can play a tremendous role in actually measuring and tracking impact on the sustainable development goals. What is important for you to know is that every goal, apart from a set of targets, has a set of indicators that show if we're successful or not. Um, the, uh, these indicators are universal. So they help us to track progress from one topic, you know, from one year to the next and all these topics. And if you're going to measure your impact, use these indicators to measure it. Um, your National Bureau of Statistics, and especially if you're in Europe, because they're harmonized across Europe, has more in-depth insight into your national performance on each of these indicators and every six months they're obliged although many of them don't to send in an update report so you can track on each of the targets and each of the goals how your country is performing also in relationship to other european uh, uh, countries but it's typically national and not uh, uh local although there are also municipalities especially the bigger ones that are tracking on the local level these indicators so I would almost say that we're better at measuring the SDGs than we're actually uh, implementing them. But your starting point is these indicators for each of the uh, goals that are there. Let's see, Lina has raised uh, her hand. I don't know how that works, um, but there is a question that leads to the question. There is something in, so I can't see who actually wrote the question, but that leads to the question, how to react to the fact that I as an employee am not the museum. So I, I alone cannot change, for instance, free drinking water. How to change my institution if it's not only, uh, and then I don't can see the rest, if it's not just you working on it, probably. Individual actions matter in this uh, uh, context. But I think if you want to start the conversation about this in your organization, start by throwing a small team uh, workshop around what we can do ourselves. There are many things you can do as an employee and the most important one is raising awareness. I don't wear a suit jacket today, but I bought a bunch of these pins, SDG pins. You can buy them in the UNDP shop. Uh, they're very colorful and people will come to you and they'll uh, comment upon them and they'll be like, what's that pin? And you can tell that's the sustainable development goals. You know about them. And it's a starting point for a conversation. Um, there's still time to raise awareness. We need awareness before we can move to action. So you as an individual can at least raise awareness for this these goal. Um, somebody says, I didn't understand the numbers in the chart. I don't know which chart, the one chart that had the 2.4, etc. They were um, goal, so goal two, and the four is the target. Every goal has a number of targets under them. So that's a 2.4 would be goal two target for um, how was the chart made Cynthia asks I don't know which chart you meant but if it's the if it's this one it's made by the UNDP uh, by the UN and uh, um, uh, probably by a designer I don't know about that one. Oh, the one that looked like an Excel chart yeah this one it's made in collaboration with a couple of uh, museums, mostly in a conversation on, on Twitter, um, asking people how they, you know, what, what are the goals that, that they can either lead the way on support others or not change internally. It's not comprehensive, as I mentioned. So if you have feedback on that point, if you feel there are other areas to, to go on, go to the link that's at the bottom of it. And there's a lively conversation in the comments, adding and, and adjusting, and we'll update as we go uh, along. Yes, Cynthia is happy. <laughs> I answered her question. Did I miss any questions? Let's see whether there are uh, whether there are some others. Yes, no. How was the chart made? Um, 
Lena still has her hand raised. I don't know if that's by by accident or by by design. But if you want to ask a question, Lena, feel free to write it in the chat. I'll try and answer it. Um, there are some people are still typing. Uh, Anna Marie asks, is there also, is the supporting role is also in the PDF? Yes, you're going to get that one for free. So I'm not talking through it, but it's in the PDF and you can read it through. And you'll have my email. It's at the, I'll, I'll share it again. Here's my email. If you want to continue, you know, talking about it or, or chatting about it, I, I, I'm happy to uh, do that. Um, Estelle says, blah, blah, blah. You do, do, do. If they were mad, could someone, but. You seem to not have enough resources to ensure the basic missions. Do you have propositions? Ultimately, sustainability is, and this is, um, this is one of the most difficult things of the whole sustainability agenda. But ultimately, sustainability is not about doing more. It's about doing better with less. So yes, our resources are tight. I know. And it may feel like adding on, you know, taking on this new responsibility uh, hide, heightens the burden. But sustainability very much, very importantly, also means sustainability for your organization and for you yourself as a professional. So if going back to the SDGs, you see three, which is good health and well-being. This also has targets underneath that have to do with responsible working conditions. Same as SDG 8. Um, it may mean actually picking up this agenda that you start doing less, less work, because that will make you as a professional more sustainable and it may make your organization more sustainable. If there is, uh, um, if there is no sustainability in your own career and no sustainability in your organization, there's no way you're going to achieve the sustainable development goals. Internal sustainability is as important as any of the of the other ones so even if because of very tight resources and because of an overstretched schedule you can just contribute a little bit that's great but if you feel overstretched and if you feel under resourced look at your own sustainability first uh, before taking on an additional uh, burden let's see if there are some other questions i know these these things may feel daunting and it's, you know, it's another thing to do. Now museums have to work on the SDGs. We just fixed participation and, uh, and many of the other topics, social media that we had to talk about. And now we have to do the sustainable development goals. But this is about all of us. It's not just about saving the world. It's also about saving our own organizations and living in our own sustainable and, and uh, 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 prosperous life. We're at the top of the hour, uh, but I'm here. I can stay here for a while also because I know that we had like a few minutes lost at the beginning because of somehow the Wi-Fi being not as good as the uh, 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 mobile network here, for which I'm very sorry. Um, so if you want to hang around and ask some questions, you're more than welcome to do so. Otherwise, thanks a lot. I'm sure uh, Nemo will share the uh, PDF with all participants and all everybody else who wasn't there, uh, feel free to email me if you don't receive it in one way or another, or uh, ping me on social media. I will also try and make a write-up later this week of the message with some examples on my blog, so you can actually uh, read that. And the one main, like super important thing that I'd have to do is, uh, I'd have to ask you, is if you start on a project related to the sustainable development goals, or if you make some internal changes, talk about this. Share it with me, share it with the world, because together we can get this in huge uh, uh, museum community to be a force for good. And that has already started, it has already begun, but that movement deserves to grow. So talk about it, share it, and, and show me your good examples. Thank you very much. And Nemo says, don't forget to register for the Tartu Conference. They're always here to sell, right? But go by train. Don't go by plane. Is there any resources that we can show senior management that show the SDGs are not only good for humanity, 
but in Greece, short-term museum goals as well, such as visitation numbers. Uh, Peter asks, I'm not sure if there is like, um, I'm not sure. I know that libraries, and there are some examples in the, in, the, in the slides that I shared, I know that libraries have put up quite a good lobby to show that actually being meaningful to their communities around the SDGs helps the library itself. I'm not sure if uh, uh, ICOM has done the same thing or NEMO, but I do think that that, that uh, information is available. I also believe it is good for visitation numbers. Um, so if there's not a PDF, and I don't know about any, I would now say, Peter, that we um, collectively look at NEMO and encourage them to take up take that up as a challenge and 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 create one of their publications looking at the short term impact of the SDGs on the you know the, the impact of museums such as visitors, uh, etc. I don't know top of heart, top of mind. I know libraries do, but let's let's encourage Nemo to make one of these uh, PDFs. Challenge accepted, Nemo says. Thanks, that's great, guys. Cool. Can you, Tim asks, can you recommend any articles on the topic? Well, I can recommend you, there's so much happening and it's going so fast. I can recommend you follow certain people on, on social media. So um, it's going to be difficult to say that online, I think, uh, but uh, because you won't know how to spell, but people like Henry McGee and Andrew Potts and uh, Sarah Sutton, they're all great. Um, they tweet a lot about these topics. They share a lot of relevant articles. They're very up to date. They take a very broad view on the, on the topic. So I highly recommend you follow um, uh, Dan. Um, and I'll, it's a bit difficult for me to switch screens and type their names in the in the chat, but I'll put them in the follow up. I'll make note of it and I'll I'll put their names in the follow up so you can actually uh, start following them online or go through their Twitter and 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 read about it. Cynthia said, "I've read some criticisms about the fact that culture is a big omission in the SDGs. What do you think about it?" Well, <laughs> that's a good one actually. Yeah, culture wasn't culture is in the SDGs. Culture is all over the SDGs, but the word is mentioned one place, 11.4. Um, but, but the thing you could uh, ask is not necessarily, you know, is it good or bad that culture is in the SDGs? For instance, mobility is also not in the SDGs. There's a lot of, you know, sectors that are not addressed in the SDGs, but they've actually taken on the responsibility of achieving the SDGs. Um, and instead of focusing, this is my opinion, instead of focusing whether culture should or should not be in the SDGs, what we need to do is work hard to show our impact and show with our local government and our national governments that we're in the update report so that, you know, when our government writes to New York about the work we've done in the SDGs, they'll write Museum X or Museum Y has done this project with this impact and then uh, show that we're actually contributing to achieving the SDGs. In the Millennium Development Goals and in any of the other you know, global agendas, culture has never been mentioned. We've now been mentioned once and the world is looking at us. We need to take the responsibility very seriously so that you know, the next time around, we're actually at the table when these uh, goals are being set. Having said that, a lot of our resources are uh, 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 working on the, um, uh, a lot of our, a lot of people have contributed to the global agenda and are com uh, contributing to its implementation right now. So I think culture is claiming that position. I'm just waiting if there are some other questions and otherwise uh, I would like to thank you all for your attention and uh, wish you a very pleasant day. Thank you so much for joining uh, with me and it was great to talk with you. Thank you.
I think Nemo is kicking us out. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>